Hey guys, welcome to season two of The Pitch with Fox, Beatums, and Mitch. Hey guys, welcome to The Pitch. I'm your host, John Fox, alongside here with Beatums and Mitch Sabatelli. Now, top stories of the week, Albert Pujols' negotiating deadline has passed, meaning that Pujols and the Cardinals won't be able to restart um, talks until the end of the season. Thoughts on this, Mitch? Devastating for Cardinal Nation. You know, what, what else does St. Louis have? You know, they have Albert Pujols. Every, everywhere you go, you probably see a Pujols jersey. Um, I, never, I never thought of somebody having a $300 million deal, but, you know, if anyone's worth it, it could be him. I mean, what he does to draw people to that stadium every day, um, he's such a great person at clubhouse. He's such a great offensive, obviously, offensive weapon. Um, and when you hear Cardinals, the first thing I think of is Albert Pujols. I don't know about you, but, you know, there's such a powerhouse there. It, with Matt Holliday last, last season, they were perfect together. Uh, um, he, even without any supporting cast around him, when, uh, playing in the NL Central, uh, if you have Albert Pujols, you have a good shot at winning that division, you know? So, I, I mean, giving a $300 million contract to Pujols, I, I don't see why they shouldn't do that, you know? I, I think Albert Pujols is probably the best player in the league. Oh yeah. I, like it, it, putting all my bias aside, you know, mm -hmm. being a Yankees fan with Derek Jeter. Yeah. Albert Pujols has to be my favorite player because he does everything. He has the defense. He yep. has the offense. Gold Glove winner. Everything. So to me, why not give him what he wants? You know, ten years yeah. is a lot. But well, you're not going to just throw whatever he Albert wants. Albert Pujols thirty or thirty one. He's thirty one. Thirty one. So he'll be forty one when the contract's over. Yeah. I mean. Maybe try to get him eight years and add a little money. Do something like that and make yeah. him happy, you know? Speaking of um, Yankees, A-Rod, who just signed one of these deals a couple of years ago, that might go down as one of the worst deals in history. I'm sorry, but yeah. he's not going to pull it off. He, as soon as that happened, I was like... And right now, that was about the same age as Albert Pujols is right now. A-Rod was 32. But um, they're also saying that 10 years might not even be enough for Albert Pujols. He might want 12, 13, which is insane, insane amount of cash. But you know he already has been more than a ten-year deal in nope. baseball. He's, he's all, he already has a lot of wear and tear on his body. I think I mean he's gonna have to be a DH eventually. Yeah. So I'm looking at an American League team. Yeah, but first base is a little easier to play. Yeah, it is. Older. It is. But when you're 42 and playing first base every day and still going for home run records and stuff. But I mean, I, it, it's a lot easier than say like an outfielder or like. Oh a yeah, I, yeah, of course. But you know Albert Pujols, um, that contract. It, I'd give it to him. You know, he's um, he's still got a couple a long time away, another five six years of a really quality baseball left in him. I think um, you know if you're gonna have to give him a ten year contract, you gotta go do that because it's not like New York. I think out of every player, the most valuable player to his team, not just stats wise, is Zappa Pools because of his leadership ability, because of everything that he brings to the team. So I mean, that he brings in and, and the Cardinals said. are right now lowballing, going around somewhere around the Crawford to Shishera deal. Somewhere in the middle, meaning like 21, 22. That's not going to get done. Not I mean, at all. And I, that's a slap in the face to uh, Pujols. What Pujols has done, it, um, making this self-imposed deadline, is really bad on him. He's looking more and more like a LeBron right now. But um, I, I would have just, if I was him, I, I would have just let it go. I don't know if he would put him in that quite status yet. Because well, you know, I, I, I can because, you know, LeBron was from Akron. He grew up in Akron his whole life, stayed in Cleveland. And right now, Albert Pujols, he was born in the Dominican Republic, but when he was 15, he moved to Missouri. So he's been in Missouri his whole life. So, you know, you look at a player like Joe Maurer. They interviewed Joe Maurer the other day on ESPN. He, was, he was born in, in St. Paul. He's played for uh, his, the Twins his whole career, got drafted by the Twins. He just signed a huge, huge deal to finish his whole career with uh, the Twins. I, I, I hope Albert Pujols can do something like that, but right now it's not looking too good with that whole... Uh, the whole deadline thing, I would have just let it go. It, it, I would not said anything. I would just, if I was Albert Pujols, I would have said, "Listen, I'll talk. I'll talk to him during the season. If nothing gets done, I'll re-talk, rekindle talks at the end of the season." Well, he also doesn't want to talk during the season because yeah, it's going to affect. It's going to affect him. But um, you know, uh, St. Louis fans, they're going to have to do everything in their power. They're going to have to start chance, re-sign Pujols every game and stuff to get this uh, or Cardinals organization to do it. Um, I remember a couple years back when Mike Lowell was going to be a free agent, and uh, during the uh, Red Sox parade and the World Series parade, Mike Lowell was going by. They were just saying, re-sign Mike, instead of even cheering for him, you know? I, and I think that helped. Mike Lowell, had, I, I don't think that was a good contract after all, after all but 
Yeah, and that, and that was a guy who, you know, we only had for a few years. I mean, yeah. this is Albert Pujols. This he's is the face of the Cardinals. He's the, he's the icon. You look at his he, Cardinals. He's like the Tom Brady for the Cardinals. Oh, no, he's more than Tom yeah. Brady. He's, well, more, he's more than anything. He is St. Louis. He is all of Missouri. You, you know, I, I mean, you, you look at uh, St. Louis. They've had one icon in their whole career. And St it's Sam Musial. And um, since then, it's been all Albert Pujols. And when I think of St. Louis, it's all I think of is Albert Pujols. So, I mean, it, it's not like it's just like it's, it's a really good player. If they come back in, uh, yeah, it's going to be a financial problem for the next 10 years. But if you come in and maybe sign a Prince Fielder or something, that's not going to replace what he brings, you know? So I, I just give him the cash. It, and really, I think he's worth around $35, $40 million for what he brings to that team. $40 million is a lot. $40 million. $40 million is a lot. I, I, don't, I wouldn't give him $40 million, but I think he's worth something around there. Because put penciling him in that lineup, you have a chance to win your division for the next 10 years to come. Just him. And having Holiday under him, just him for the next 10 years, I think you have a good shot of winning the division for the next 10, 10 years. How isn't that worth 30, 40 million, you know? I don't, I don't. 30 million, it. yes, 40, no. Well, not. why not? He's, a, he's, he's never had a batting average under 300. I know, he's, he's, he's still consistently he's, 35 plus homers every yeah. year. Yeah, uh, no, he's, he's coming out of his prime, awesome. but if, if you're going to give a, I mean, if you're coming in yeah. with a, an opening offer of 19, 20 million to Albert Pujols. No, that's that's ridiculous. That's a slap in the face. I, I, if I'm Pujols, I'm saying, yo, I'm worth, I'm worth 40 million for, for the next 10 years, and maybe they can settle around 30, 31. Yeah, that's where I, that's See, where I think he belongs. The worst thing about this is if he does hit the free agent market. Yeah, he's not staying in St. Louis because there's going to be other teams out there that are going to give him a lot. I think that's what we're going to talk about. We're going into right now. So. Like you can take this, Brian, first. Um, which teams would be possible suitors for him if he... Number one team that pops into the mind is the Yankees. Because, you know, mm -hmm. they, they wanted Prince Fielder. They still want Prince Fielder. But if they can get out of pools, that's ten times better than getting Prince Fielder. Yeah. So it, what they could do with their team, you know, Posada's not going to be there much longer. Mm -hmm. They're going to need a DH. You know, him and Teixeira could swap. Yeah. Something like that. You know, keep them both fresh. You know, Teixeira's been kind of dropping off a little yeah. bit. Maybe put Teixeira, DH, put pools there. I, I say absolutely no. Um, a Rod, like I just mentioned, for that ten years, um, right now he already is below average at third base defensively. Oh, yeah. He's going to have to move to DH eventually. And Mark Teixeira still has a, another six, seven years left in that contract. And when they signed him, he wanted to be that first base. He wanted to be that face of the future, face of the franchise for the next um, seven years or whatever. And he's he's a Gold Glove player like Pujol, so they're not yeah. going to want to be a DH at all. So if I'm the Yankees. <laughs> They're already really high in the, uh, the payroll as it is right now, right. and I know they can pay it, but I, I, I know Jeter and A-Rod, if they're going to stay here for the ne next five years or whatever, one of them is going to have to move to DH. Well, it's not going to be Jeter. They've already said he's going to move to center field. Okay, if, so. if he moves to center field, he's going to be 38, 39 in center field? I don't think so. One of them is going to have to be in a DH eventually. I'm looking at two teams, and that's the Chicago Cubs, believe it or not. St. Louis Cardinals, worst Worst uh, rivalry yeah. right there, St. Cubs. So imagine Pujols in a Cubs uniform. That's terrible. Well, but Derek Lee. <laughs> Derek Lee is an Oriole now. But um, Carlos Pena just signed a one-year deal with the Cubs for $10 million. That one year is up after this year. And I think that screams out with Pujols. You know, they have the cash. Um, they had the owner problems finally gone away. Alfonso Soriano's contract's coming off the book soon. Uh, why not? Give I this guy... I think they'd much rather see Pujols than yeah, Pena. So. Yeah, and not only that, it's not. It's an addition by subtraction. Taking him off the Cardinals and putting him on the Cubs, not it's only like is he giving blood. the Cubs... Yeah, it's kind of like the Carl Crawford thing with the Rays, only that better. fuel the Cubs. And also, they win it. <laughs> also, one other contender out there, as much as I, uh, you might hate this, is the Red Sox. And yeah, they might send uh, Adrian Gonzalez, you know, that deal might get done. But even with Adrian Gonzalez, uh, J.D. Drew, David Ortiz, and Jonathan Palabon are coming off the books right now. That frees up much more than enough money to sign Albert Pujols, along with Adrian Gonzalez in an eight-year deal. And if you're talking about this, right now Adrian Gonzalez has not signed his deal yet. If they come in with a contract, oh, by the way, Adrian, in a couple of years you might have to be a DH because we're going to be getting Albert Pujols play, uh, to protect you in the, in the lineup. I think he's more than happy to have that. And right now having a, an Adrian Gonzalez, Albert Pujols, Carl Crawford, uh, Dustin Pedroia, Jacoby Ellsbury, that's like a that's like a video game lineup. Yeah. And um I, I think yeah, Adrian Gonzalez would be fine with that. The same could be said if he went to the Yankees. Though. No, because the Yankees are already in that, that financial problem and with eight Red Sox don't have any other really old guys that are gonna have to move to a DH. The, the, the Yankees don't have anybody that's their contracts are, you know, that would allow them to It has nothing to do with no. the positions. No, it, it, I mean Yankees they have unlimited money. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, unlike the Red Sox, the Red Sox they have a lot of money too. But they don't have unlimited. Ridiculous. But you know, either you, way, the Red Sox don't have that old guy like an A. Rod or a Jeter that's going to have to move to DH in a, in a little bit. You know, they're going to have to replace David Ortiz because David Ortiz well, is going to be gone. The Yankees have to have some kind of plan if they want a Prince Fielder. I don't think they're going to be getting Prince Fielder either. But the only thing I'm is, not saying Prince they Fielder, will, they want Prince Fielder is not a defensive player like Pujols. No, so if they come in and say, "Hey, Prince, you're, you're going to be our DH for the next ten years, and we're going to give you a." Uh, $20 million, I think he'll take that way more than Pujols will. The, the other team that I was thinking about, I'm staying in the East. I'm thinking Tampa Bay. Because what? they have nothing. <laughs> they have no money. <laughs> <laughs> but, Where are they going to come yeah, up but, with $30 million? Yeah, but think about it. Yeah. They, that's the point. They they got rid of all their big money players. No, they didn't. Those they guys. Got, they got rid of Yeah, they got Crawford. rid of Crawford. They, got, yeah, they weren't making any money. They were still in their arbitration years. Yeah, they, but this was the first time they were cashing in. Crawford was making $7 million a year. Yeah, but what if they're using this as a rebuilding phase and they want to bring... I, I, just, I can just see him fitting I will, I would put that in as a 2001 odds that he goes to the race, but... That, that's my long shot pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll go... I mean, I... The Yankees, I know the money's a situation there, but... The Yankees are always a team. I mean, I can look at the Mets, who, you know, they need something. They I don't see the Mets. They always play second fiddle to the Yankees. They, they're going to need something eventually. But I'm looking at the, the Cubs and Red Sox, major players for Pools. The machine. All right. Well, moving on to other top stories. Another big top story, especially for us, being yeah. Bruins fans. Tomas Caberlet, Caberlet traded to the Bruins today uh, for yeah. prospect Joe Colburn. Uh, in the, in the Bruins' uh, first pick. Yeah, in the Bruins' first Not pick. Toronto's. So, Thoughts on that? Yeah, Thomas Caberlet, I mean, this is the guy, He's this is kind of like an Adrian Gonzalez. You know, the last three years he's been rumored to come to Boston, and, you know, finally he has. And, you know, playing, playing with San Char, that's going to form the da most dangerous one-two punch in a defensive pairing in the whole entire game. San Char is that, there's two types of defensive players. There's the um, physical, huge player, like a San Char, and the finesse guy who moves the puck up and down the ice to set up chances. chances. And that's really what the Bruins have been lacking. And that's what Thomas Caberlet brings to the Bruins. He's one of the best puck-moving puck, puck moving defensemen in the game. And he's going to set up a lot more uh, chances for guys up in front of the net, like Patrice Bergeron and Milan Lucic. And also, uh, Caberlet is great in the power play. And the Bruins' biggest weakness is special teams, power play, and shorthanded. And he's going to help both of those areas out. So I love this move. And it also shows uh, Peter Shirelli... Uh, he's got a bad rap since coming on to the Bruins as a GM. He hasn't made a lot of good moves since coming on. You know, he's, his biggest moves are like Mark Recchi and Nathan Horton this year. But no big, big moves come up. This is, shows that uh, PC is willing to actually go out and try to contend for a Stanley Cup. The Bruins tied with the Canadians right now for first place. Yeah. Of it. Yes. They both have over like 69, 69 points. points. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I, I think this puts them over the top. I think it does too. I mean, th like you said, I mean, you pretty much... Nailed everything perfectly, but you know they needed this one move, yeah, just just to separate them from the Canadians, and I think this did it. Yeah, and um, also they lost last year. They lost Dennis Wyman and Matt Hunwick, and uh, Dennis Wyman got a bad rap because he wasn't he wasn't physical enough. He was he didn't give it all. But um, the good thing about Dennis Wyman was he is a great puck moving defenseman, and uh, he set up a lot of scoring cha um, chances. And Thomas Caberlet is going to do that only better. And he's going to—he's a future captain, I think. If Sadio Chara goes down, he is 32. Hopefully, they can sign that deal because um, he's a free agent this year. But we'll see how it works out. All right, the Bruins also get Rich Pever uh, Peverly along with Boris Valabek. 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 Yeah. I don't know. All right, for Mark Stewart and Blake Wheeler. Uh, with these moves. Are the Bruins the favorites to win a Stanley I think they Cup are. or get to a Stanley Cup? You want to take this? I don't know about win the Stanley Cup. You know, they're definitely going to make a very good run for it now. Though. Yeah. I mean, I already thought they had a decent chance, but they just needed something else. A little bit more experience. And I mean, there's three players right there that they got. So yeah. Tim and Tomas. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I, I think they have a shot at it. Mm. Rich Pebbly has 14 goals and 20 assists playing the Atlanta Thrashers with nobody around him. He he's a second line he's a second line defenseman uh, second line centerman sorry, and he uh, put, he's putting out major points major goals for that team. And uh, Atlanta Thrashers when he when Ilya Kovalchuk was on that team he was putting up even more points. So I look for Pebbly to thrive as a third line center uh, as in the Bruins. I think it's a great move. Um, right now I think like I said PC they also got Chris Kelly too. I think he's making the, he's the only GM making moves right now and. Um, they look, they look real good right now. The one thing that helps me be able to pick the Bruins, too, is all the losses that Pittsburgh's had. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the one team Malkin that I was Crosby. going with. You know? 
So I, I think they have a really good shot at this. Yep. And um, Brooks Valabic, he's all he's six seven, which is um, huge. <laughs> yeah. Imagine putting him and Zidane Chara in the same defensive pairing. Six six nine Zidane Chara and six seven Brooks Val um, Boris Valabic. I mean, those are basketball players. Yeah. <laughs> on the ice, it's going to be like, it's just going to be towers on the ice. I mean, you're not going to see anybody. Uh, the only problem is I don't think Tuka Rask is going to be able to see, or Tim Thomas is going to be able to see the puck going by them because <laughs> they're so big. But um, Also, Mark Stewart, he was a solid player, but um, he, he was actually a real good player. But Blake Wheeler, real under real underachiever. Um, he's, he's had some moments where he can um, really put goals in the net. But lately, these last couple of years, after almost winning the Calder Trophy as a Rookie of the Year candidate, he he hasn't lived up to those expectations, and really, you know, they give him a lot of chances playing against with Krejci, with Chuck, with uh, Savard and Bergeron. He's not cashing in, so I think it was good letting him go get a first fresh start. All right, we're at 15 minutes right now, so would you like to do the viewer emails very quick? Let's go. All right, viewer emails. Matt from San Diego asks us. Is there a possibility that the Cards trade Pujols, and if not, what's the chances that he stays with St. Louis? I think that would be completely foolish for them to just randomly trade him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the only way I can see him being traded by whatever team ends yep. up signing him is the fact that they're going to need to sign him first and then trade him. Yeah. And why would you sign yeah. him and then trade him? Because yeah. you're going to have to pay some of his you're gonna have to pay. You're going to have to give up massive, massive prospects. And the only reason the Cardinals would be willing to trade him is if he comes out and says, listen... I'm not signing with the Cardinals. And why would you be willing to give up that much prospects when you just sign the guy in the offseason? You know what well, I'm saying? Well, I mean, a, a team, like I said, with Tampa Bay, you know, that would be something good for a team like that to do. But why, would the, team, why would the team signing him do it? Yeah. That, that, there's no point in it. If, if I'm the Cubs right now and I'm going to give them tons of prospects, my most hated rival for Albert Pujols, who I can just sign in the offseason, the only reason the Cardinals would be willing to trade him, it's like I said, is if, if Pujols comes out and says, listen, I'm not going to come sign with you, and I don't think he's going to do that unless a major, major fallback happens. So if I'm the Cardinals or, or I mean, if I'm the Cardinals, Cubs, Red Sox, any of the suitors, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'll just wait it out. Yeah. So I, I'd, give it a, I'd give it a 3% chance he gets traded in the, in the midseason. I'll give it a 4. Okay. All right. Moving on to our final viewer email. Mark from Dallas. This is his second time emailing us. Thank you. Um, you guys being Boston fans, this is his question. Yeah. Right now, who has the better shot? Uh, title, the Celtics or the Bruins? It's a good I, question. Um, I'm still going to have to say the Celtics. Celtics yeah. yeah. Just because experience, experience. they have the experience, they have the chemistry, you know, they're doing great against all these good teams, so yeah. I, I can't pick against the Celtics. I'm not saying anything bad against yeah, the Bruins. No. It's just the Celtics okay. you can't pick against. I, I, I'm going to go with the Celtics, too. I think with, their, with that experience and with all um, playoff experience and everything, and right now they're pretty much locked up that they're going to be either a 1-2 seed with, with Miami the only thing I'm, I'm leaning towards Bruins is because there's less contenders over there, you know? There's no, it's, it's more wide open in the NHL. You've seen last year, the Bruins were nothing last year. They got, almost got to the Eastern Conference Finals. And right now, the Celtics, they, they look real good. But right now, they're looking at possibly maybe getting a small forward at the trade deadline. And Miami's looking at getting Troy Murphy. They're getting Udonis Haslam back. That's going to make Miami a huge different team. And Celtics just beat Miami for the third time and still... There's a lot of contenders there. San Antonio, Miami, um, the list goes on and on. Lakers, Oklahoma City, Orlando, but, you know, they both look real good right now. I wonder if what Stephen A. Smith said is true about uh, Wallace coming back. Yeah, Rasheed Wallace. Uh, yeah, I think, he said that, what, a month and a half ago? Yeah. And also, um, if Rip, he does, that'd be huge. Rip Hamilton's doing nothing right now for the Pistons, so they're going to be trying to let him go. If, if Rip Hamilton goes to the Celtics... Who knows, maybe you can convince Rishi Wallace some probably good friends since they've been playing so long in Detroit. That would cool. be great. That would be. All right. That's all for the top stories, and we probably still have much more on the way. Yep. NBA, NFL, and N uh, MLB. Excuse me. So, we'll see Are you going to be here? I might not be here. I might not be here. All right. Somebody named Michael Peroni might That's have to sit in there. Here. He might so. have to sit in. Yeah, all right. So, stay tuned. All right. See you then.